Welcome back to Family Church this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome to those in the room and those watching us online. Like Pastor Josh just said, I don't know how he got from there to sitting right there, but I mean, that was just awesome, amazing how you just did that. We are continuing our series called The Language of Love. I pray that last week's message inspired some conversation at home. Maybe you began to talk a little bit about love, what your love language is. Uh, probably half this room, your love language is words of affirmation. So I just wanna say to you this morning, you look great. I love you. Men, you're doing a great job leading your families, directing them through this season. Um, I ask, don't, 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 let, don't let the news and don't let what's happening in our world steal your joy. Amen? Uh, th th there's no need, come on somebody, there's no need to sit in your house getting angrier and angrier at the TV. It is solving nothing, all right? So let the joy of the Lord be your strength today. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind stays on him. And that's your job. It is your job to keep your mind stayed on him. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. All right, good stuff. Uh, last week we introduced the idea of love tanks, or for our uh, illustration, love buckets. We introduced words of affirmation, things like, you are beautiful, you are handsome, I love you so much, whatever, you know? Whatever those words might be that fills your love tank. If words of affirmation are your love language, I pray that you told other people that that's your love language, so they can speak that to you. Um, I have a really hard time speaking the love language of words of affirmation. It takes a lot of work for me. It takes a lot of work for me to find the silver lining, right, and, and find something good to say. So I have to work on that. When I'm around people who need words of affirmation, I'm very intentional about that. I'm, and I work really hard to find, wow, are those new glasses? They're so cool. You know, whatever, like finding something to say nice. Today, we're gonna talk about love language number two, and it's quality time. I think this is the worst love language of all of them, in my personal opinion. Now, don't get upset if your love language is quality time. I didn't say you were the worst one. I just said quality time, I think, is the worst one because there's no shortcut to it. There's no shortcut. Words of affirmation, easy. I could send you a text. I could say something real quick, and we're done. If it was gifts, I could go on Amazon, send you a gift, done. But quality time, it's second for second, minute for minute, hour for hour, day for day, week for week, putting time in. No shortcut. No shortcut, all right? But here's the thing about quality time. And if you're a quality time person, you can affirm this. It's not just about time. It's not simply being in the room with someone for two hours. It's about being in the room with them for two hours, not on their phone. Not distracted by TV. But two hours giving each other attention and connection. It's about communicating in a way that the person whose love language is quality time, their love tank is being filled. The person whose love language is quality time craves attention. They want friends, they want people over, they want to entertain. Or if they are an introvert, and don't like to entertain, what they want is uninterrupted attention from the person they want attention from. Come on, somebody. And this is kind of where we miss it, right? So for me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a quality time, I didn't realize I was, but I'm a quality time person. And it's not so much that I want 
a, a, a certain amount of time to fill my love tank, but the time I get, I want you to be paying attention. Like, I want you there. I want you in the moment. So I was always raised, my family would, we would always watch TV together or movies together. It was just like a thing we did. And one of the things that just bugs me out the worst is, and I don't understand how people can do it, but we're watching a movie, but then they're on their phone scrolling through Facebook or reading something. And then I'm like, yo, did you just see that? And I'm like, huh, what? Like, so for me, I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm watching the same movie, but you're not watching, you missed the greatest part of the movie. And then, well, what happened? I'm not going back in and explaining it all to you. Huh? Like that's, that, that's a little aggravating to me. So, so what I'm asking is, watch this movie with me so that we can see what's happening together, we can be engaged in this together, we can have a conversation about it. I don't want you just in the room. I'd like to share a couple passages today in the Bible where Jesus spoke the love language of quality time. And they're kind of abstract. You'll have to really, I'll have to explain where the quality time came into play. But the first one is in Luke 9, I'm sorry, Luke 19, verse 1. It says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. Anybody ever heard the story of Zacchaeus? The, 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 uh, I was raised singing a little song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he? He climbed up in the sycamore trees to see what he could, okay. Anyway. <laughs> he was a wee little man. Zacchaeus was a, was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was a wee little man, because he was short, he could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead, climbed up a sycamore fig tree to see Jesus since he was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up, he said, Zacchaeus, you wee little man, come, he didn't say that, I just like to think he did. <laughs> come down immediately, watch this, I must stay at your house today. What a strange first sentence to say to somebody. Seriously, I've never met somebody at the airport or at church like, hey, Pastor Mike, so great to meet you. I must stay at your house tonight. <laughs> never happened in my life, right? I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to talk junk about him behind his back, right? That's what this means, began to mutter. Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner? I just love that. I just love that. I love that Jesus says to you and I, I gotta be at your house. I need to be in your presence, even though you don't qualify to be anywhere around me. He, he takes his perfection and he marries it to imperfection. They start talking junk, watch this. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord. Now, you gotta understand, that's a big transitioner. He didn't say, look, teacher. Look, rabbi. He said, look, Lord. He's in his heart. He now is accepting Jesus as the Christ as the Messiah, as his Lord. Look, Lord, here and now, I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, let me explain this to you. Tax collectors were not liked in this time. It's kind of like the IRS. Let's just be honest. You get a letter in the mail from the IRS, you don't think it's a good thing. You're not like, woo, they sent me some money. <laughs> you look at that like, oh my God, I pay my taxes. There's this immediate like, they want more money from me. Come on, somebody. 
You ain't never think it's nothing good getting a letter from the IRS. That's kind of like, he, this is a tax collector, right? He don't got no friends. Nobody wants to be this guy's friend. In fact, someone who wants to be his friend, the whole crowd. Look at Jesus trying to hang out with sinners. Trying to hang out with this punk. Zacchaeus is used to buying people, paying them off, having expensive parties just to impress people. Like the only way people did go to hang out with him is if he threw an expensive party. But no one wanted to be with him because of him. But in a moment of seeing this man, in a moment of Jesus seeing this guy up in a tree, just to look down, just to get a glance of Jesus, Jesus knows within him, this man needs a touch. This man needs my presence. This man needs a friend. And here's the biggest fear when it comes to God and when it comes to people that you want a relationship with. This thought in our mind, if this person knows the real me, will they love me? Will they accept me? If this person knows the real things I struggle with, the real thoughts that go through my mind, the real ups and downs of my personality, will they really want to be my friend if they see behind the mask? Zacchaeus is looking for a real friend, yet who wants to be my friend? Who really wants to spend time with me because of just Zach? Right? Jesus says to him, Zacchaeus, I must hang out with you today. I must come stay at your house. I must. This wasn't, hey, do you mind if I stop by for dinner? Because I heard your wife's a real good cook. This was, no, no, no. I want to be with you, Zacchaeus. I want to spend some time with you. I want to hear your story. I want to hear about the things you're struggling with. I want to hear the things that make you happy. I want to know the dreams that are in your heart. You, you, you were not in grade school thinking, I can't wait to be a tax collector one day. What did you really want to do with your life? Jesus speaks the language of love that Zacchaeus needs, and it creates a change in his heart. In John chapter 4, there's another story. And the sentence structure is kind of similar between the two. Again, another abstract quality time scripture. John 4.4, 4. Jesus is traveling with his disciples. He's traveling from Judea to Galilee, and he says this to his disciples. We must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Let's just understand this. From Judea to Galilee, any well-intentioned Jew would not go through Samaria, which was the fastest route. They would cross over the Jordan, go around Samaria to get to Galilee because they would never have anything to do with Samaritans. Samaritans were like, they called them dogs. They were a, a, a mixed breed between Jew and Gentile. They, 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 they were what you would call a cafeteria Jew, right? They would pick and choose what they wanted to believe of each side, and it was just like this really mixed thing. They called them a half-breed kind of thing. They would never go to Samaria. But Jesus uses the same words that are spoken to Zacchaeus, I must go to Samaria. I must go to Samaria. There's 
an appointment that I need to have. There's some quality time. There's somebody's bucket that needs to be filled with some quality time, and they are in Samaria. I must needs go to Samaria. There's this woman filling her buckets with water. She's there at this time because this was a off hour for women to go fill their buckets with water. She would not go at the popular time because she had somewhat of a reputation. She would go on off hours to avoid the gossip, to avoid the looks. You see, this woman has had multiple husbands, multiple love affairs. She would give herself to men just to get quality time. And Jesus must, needs, go meet with her. Jesus wasn't looking really to get water from this lady. His request for water was just kind of a set up. Give me a drink. She looks back, she's like, who, how could you ask me for a drink? Funny. He's saying, give me what's in your love tank. Give me what's in your bucket. Her bucket's empty. It's a setup question. Give me something to drink, but her love tank's empty. She's got nothing to give him of herself. It's void because she's looking to get this bucket filled from anybody who would give her attention or quality. Time and Jesus is like, I don't have any strings attached. I'm not really trying to get anything from you. I just wanna let you know that if you knew who you were talking to, if you knew who you were talking to, you wouldn't even let me ask you for a drink. You would ask me. You would ask me to give you a drink of a living water, a water that would never run dry. <clears throat> Essentially, he's saying, I want to fill your love tank today with good news. Someone whose love language is quality time will complain about things like this. If your spouse or any of your relatives complain in this manner, their love language might just be quality time. We need to do more things together. Ever heard that one? We used to go for walks together. We used to hang out and do fun things, just you and I. We used to have so much in common. We used to drive around in the car and look at houses and waste a tank of gas. Come on. We need to go on a vacation, just you and I. It might be an indication that the person you're in a relationship with is quality time and that in those moments their love tank is running dry. So let's talk about a couple areas that we can work on in regards to quality time if a loved one has this love language. And the first one is this, focused attention. Focused attention. Focused attention. Focused attention. Uh, th there's this idea uh, called present moment awareness. Being present in the moment. I am here right now. I am connected to my body and I am connected to this moment. It's so easy in the world of distraction today to be in the room but not mentally or emotionally present. And the person who is craving quality time is asking for you to be present, all right? You can easily spot the difference between a dating couple and a married couple out at a restaurant. A dating couple are sitting there talking to each other, gazing into each other's eyes, connecting. Married couple, they're looking around the restaurant, they're on their phones. 
Come on, somebody. It's true. I bet you could go to a restaurant and go the entire time you're there, besides the fact when you're stuffing your face on your phone, not even connected to the person who's across the table. It can become that easy. Like, and for the person whose love language is quality time, not only did you not fill their bucket, but you poked another hole in it by not giving them what they expected they were gonna get by going out to eat. All right? So the question is this. Is your attention on the other person or is it simply on the activity that you're doing? This is what quality time wants, okay? So for example, uh, me and my wife, we don't really have a lot of sports things in common, so let's just pretend for a second that um, we were both joggers, right? Never is gonna happen, ever. Just, that's why this is just so, it's never gonna happen, right? But let's just say me and her are both joggers, and we say, hey, let's go for a jog today. It's not so much about the jog. It's about the person I'm going on the jog with. It's about the conversation in between the running and <laughs> the walking, right? The person who's quality time, they don't care about the activity as much as they care about you. You are here with me. Every vacation, here's an example. Every vacation as a child, when I was a kid, my family, we loved going to Myrtle Beach or, or somewhere more south where it was warmer. My dad was stationed in the Air Force in Myrtle Beach, so uh, we would go back there a lot uh, to vacations because they loved it there. But uh, the family activity every single night was mini golf. Any mini golfers in the house? And not just like cheese little mini golf where like, it's just two by fours and it goes, to, I mean, we're talking volcanoes erupting and clown heads, like the big ones. Mini golf was the family activity every night. And loser had to buy ice cream. So it was intense, man. And I mean, let me tell you something. My dad and my mom, they didn't go easy on us. We were five. <laughs> they didn't go easy on us, okay? And my dad had the scorecard out. He counted every stroke. Like, if you even touch it and it rolled, like, that was a stroke. It was serious. Although it was about mini golf, it wasn't mini golf. It was the screaming when one person got a hole in one. It was the laughing when you hit the ball and it went off the course. And you go chase after it before it went into the water. It was the laughing when you hit the other person's ball and then it went in the hole. It wasn't the mini golf. It was who was playing mini golf. It's how we were interacting with one another. I couldn't imagine today how it would be if we had cell phones back then. We might have lost the importance of the family quality time because we would have been too distracted. For the person whose love language is quality time, they don't care about you taking the right picture to post on your Facebook feed. I wanna tell you something today. Your kids don't care that you got the perfect picture to put on your Facebook feed to brag about they were there. You showed them that you actually weren't present. You were more present in your social club than you were present about what they were actually doing. They say some 80% of parents are viewing their children's lives from the backside of the camera. Don't let your kid lie, kids live be viewed from the backside of the camera. Let their lives be viewed with your eyeballs. On them. Yeah, but I want the memory. Then buy the DVD. Buy the download of their dance recital. 
pay the $10. If, if really, like, they want you present. They want you in the moment. They want you to be there. Seriously, guys, let's just get this for a second. Who cares what anybody else thinks about your family vacation? Who cares what anybody thinks about you on the beach? Why do we have to post about you on the beach? Just be on the beach and enjoy the beach. All right, I'm off my soapbox. I'm off my soapbox. Focused attention. Focused attention doesn't have to be for hours. It just needs to be for the time that it's there. The busier we are, dads, let me talk to you for a second. The busier we are, more, the more and more important it is to give our children focused attention. And I know it's tough, seriously. After working 10 hours a day, making decisions all day, the last thing I want, seriously, the last thing I want is my son screaming as he's running through the house on his hoverboard, but I understand he hasn't seen me for 18 hours. Eight hours of sleep, 10 hours of work, he hasn't seen me. He wants some time. He wants to show me his newest stunt. He wants to show me how on his hoverboard he can ride and shoot with his Nerf gun all the things down the hallway. Like, so I may not emotionally or energy-wise have four more hours of focused attention, but I can give him the 15 to 20 minutes that he wants to show me his new stunt. Amen. Not on my phone, not videotaping it, but present in the moment. Focused attention. How about quality conversations? Quality conversations. And by this I mean sympathetic dialogue where two individuals are sharing their experiences, their thoughts, their feelings, and desires, here we go, ready, in a friendly, uninterrupted context. It is not quality time when you're sharing your feelings in an aggressive, abusive manner. That's not, that's not filling a love tank. You poked another hole. Come on, somebody. Most spouses who complain about their significant other saying, we don't ever talk. They don't actually mean that we never say words to each other. You talk, hey, get me a glass of water. When's dinner gonna be ready? Did you see the Cowboys? Did you see the Giants? And I didn't say that because you're a Cowboy fan, it just popped into my head. <laughs> they don't mean that we're not saying words, what they're saying is the words that we're speaking to each other are just empty. They're meaningless. How was work today? But you don't really care. Because the moment I start telling you about my day, looking over their shoulder, looking outside, come on. We're talking about quality conversation, not talking about the news, not talking about politics, not talking about the weather, talking about you and me. And there is a difference between quality conversation and words of affirmation. Words of affirmation focus on what we are saying. You are amazing, you are the best. Quality conversation focuses on what we are hearing. Come on, let me just, listening sympathetically to understand what the other person is saying to you. Maybe you've heard something like this, you're not listening to me. What they're saying is, I know you heard words, but you're not understanding the importance or the gravity of the words that I'm using. You're not hearing what I'm trying to tell you. So I want to give you a few tools today to have quality conversation. I don't want you to leave here again not being able to speak someone's quality time love language because it's frustrating. 
It's frustrating. If you're a quality time person, not getting the attention that you need, it's frustrating. So here's point number one or, or, or tip number one. Maintain eye contact. Maintain eye contact. You didn't do anybody a favor at the restaurant by putting your phone on the table. Yeah, but I'm showing them that I'm giving it, no, no. Because your phone's on the table while you're eating, face up, you get a text message, your eyes go from me to your screen. And just that break for a person whose love language is quality time says to them, whatever just happened on your phone is more important than what we're talking about right now. And they're aggravated. And actually, if, if their love tank is dry, they're done. Emotionally, they're done with that conversation right there from a simple text that you thought you were helping out by putting it on the table. Putting it face down is no better because we've got vibrate on. We felt the table buzz. <laughs> and as they're talking, he's... are you okay? Could be something important. Now your mind is disengaged. I'm trying to talk to you. Funny, but marriages are ending because of simple things that can be fixed. Number two, don't listen and do something else at the same time. Don't listen and do something else at the same time. If they're trying to get your attention and you cannot give it in the moment, ready? Here's a great sentence. I know you're trying to talk to me right now and I'm really interested, and I wanna give you my full attention. I can't do that right now, but if you give me 10 minutes to finish this, I'll sit down and listen to you. You clearly communicated that what I'm doing, I'm into, I need to do this, but I'm into what you're having to say too. Let me finish this, and then let's sit down and handle this. Clearly, Communicate. You cannot, pe you cannot expect people to read your mind and interpret your expectations. You have to communicate it. You have to communicate it, okay? Uh, number three, here's a great one when it's someone's love language is quality time and you're trying to have a quality conversation. Listen for feelings. Listen for feelings. What emotion is the person I'm talking to right now expressing? What emotion are they expressing? And when you then find out what emotion they're expressing, confirm it, ready, watch this. It sounds to me like you're feeling disappointed because I forgot our anniversary for the 20th time. No? Nah? No, nobody's done that? You sound a little disappointed. I, March 10, 11, right? Yeah. Bit, affirm it. You, you seem, I'm sensing that you're feeling, is that true? This is why you're feeling, because I did this, or I'm not doing this. Is this correct? Is this what I'm hearing? Number four, observe body language. You're talking to your whatever significant other and all of a sudden they got their fist clenched. We're going way too far. We need to walk away. Maybe you're talking all of a sudden the person's hands start to tremble. Maybe their chin starts to quiver. Maybe tears are in their eyes. Maybe their cheeks get flush this will indicate that there's feelings. And we have to understand, sometimes body language will speak one thing when the words that are coming out of their mouth are speaking something else. If that is the case, ask for clarity. I hear what you're saying, you said this, but your body language is telling me this. 
what is it? I'm confused. Come on. We're just talking about quality conversation, quality communication. I want to close out today by looking at Jesus reading body language. In Luke 24, 36, the disciples are gathered together. They're in a house, locked in. They're kind of all scared because Jesus has died. They don't know what to do. While they're still speaking, Jesus himself appears among them. And he says, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, watch, he's affirming what he's sensing. Why are you troubled? And why does doubt rise in your minds? Look at my hands, look at my feet. It is me, it is myself. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and showed them his feet. And while they still did not believe it, they were amazed. And then Jesus throws it down straight out like a man. Yo, you guys got anything to eat? <laughs> this whole raising up from the dead things really got me hungry. They gave him a piece of boiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. More quality time with his team, with his family, with his people. He affirms, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt? And he, then he affirms them, look, it's me. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I. Let's eat. Jesus knew how to speak the love language of those he was in proximity with. I wanna show you real quick as we close, I'm a little bit over time. What happens when Jesus speaks words? The, the language of love that each person needs. Remember that lady at the well, the Samaritan woman? She went to the well to fill her buckets. In John 4, 27, it says this. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking to her? Watch, here's her reaction. Then leaving her water jug, leaving her water bucket, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. She came to the well with one bucket and left the well with a different bucket. She went to one well to the well with this one bucket to fill with water, but she left with her bucket filled with the language of love that Jesus had spoken. As a result, she became an evangelist to her neighborhood. As a result of her love tank being filled, it converted her to going and telling everybody her business. When you speak a person's love language, it awakens the true nature within them. When you speak quality time, it's second for second, minute for minute, hour for hour, day for day, week for week, month for month, year for year. There's no shortcut to it. But when you speak it in quality, the results last forever. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time that we could discover your word today, that we could understand a little bit more about ourselves. We thank you, Lord, today that we could spend some quality time with you here this morning and that you would spend quality time here with us. Your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. So we thank you, Lord, for being in our midst today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our comforter, our guide, our ever-present help in time of need, the one that will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for the time that you have invested in us. Lord, as we leave here today, I thank you that we are blessed, that we are protected, that we are safe. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. We are blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Offering baskets are at the doors on your way out.